This is a tutorial on logarithm properties. The first logarithm property that we're going to discuss is the product property of logarithms. The product property of logarithms basically states that if we have the log of two numbers multiplied together, in this case m and n, well that's equal to the log of m plus the log of n, as long as we have the same base throughout the expression. So for example, if we had the log, base 2, of 4 times 7, this would be equal to the log of 4 plus the log of 7, as long as we have the same base, in this case 2. This works in the other direction as well. If we had the log of 10 and the log of 3 added together, and we saw that these had the same base, in this case 5, well then the log of 10 plus the log of 3 would be equal to the log of 30. Because again, that log has a base of 5, and 30 is just our 10 times our 3. The next property of logarithms that we're going to discuss is the quotient property of logarithms. This is just like the product property, except here we're dealing with division. And the quotient property tells us that if we're taking the log of two numbers, one divided by the other, in this case m divided by n, then that's equal to the log of m minus the log of n. Again, we have to have the same base throughout our expression. So for example, if we had the log of 10 divided by 3, we could rewrite that as the log of 10 minus the log of 3. And once again, you have to make sure that you have the same base. This works in the other direction as well. Here we have the log of 20 minus the log of 7. Now the first thing you have to check and make sure that these have the same base, which they do, it's base of 8. So then the log of 20 minus the log of 7 is just the log of 20 divided by 7. And again, we keep our base of 8. Now the last logarithm property that we're going to discuss in this tutorial is the power property. This occurs when we're taking the log of a number with an exponent. Here we have the log of m to the n power. Well, if you have an exponent on the number that you're taking the log of, you can pull that exponent out front of your log sign and just multiply the log of m by that exponent. So if we have the log of m to the n power, that's equal to n times the log of m. An example here would be the log base 3 of 4 to the x. Well, we would take this x and we would pull it out front. So the log base 3 of 4 to the x is equal to x times the log of 4. Here's another example. We have log base 9 of x to the fifth power. Well, I can take this fifth using the power property and pull it out front of our log sign. So this is going to become 5 times the log base 9 of x. These three logarithm properties that we have learned are typically used to simplify logarithms. Here if we're told that the log base 10 of 9 plus the log base 10 of 4 minus the log base 10 of 6, and we wanted to simplify this expression. Well, the first thing we do is we check and see if we have the same base, which we do. Now, if I take these first two logs, this log of 9 and the log of 4, these are added together, which means I can use the product property and write this as the log base 10 of 9 times 4. Well, 9 times 4 is 36, so this is the log base 10 of 36. Now let's not forget this log of 6. If we bring this down, this is still minus the log base 10 of 6. And these are subtracted, which means I can use the quotient property. This is the same as the log base 10 of 36 divided by 6. Because these two logs are subtracted, 
That means when I convert this into one log, our numbers are divided. So this is the log base 10 of 36 divided by 6, and 36 divided by 6 is just 6. So this is going to be the log base 10 of 6. Let's try this again. Here we have the log base 3 of x minus 5 times the log base 3 of y. Well, the first thing I'm going to notice here is I have a subtraction sign. So I'm going to use the quotient property. But before I use the quotient property, I want to look at this second term that I have here, this 5 log of y. Here I'm going to use the power property in reverse. I'm going to take this 5 and I'm going to make it the exponent of y. So this is going to be the log of x minus the log of y to the fifth power. Now that I've taken that constant out there, I can combine my log of x minus the log of y to the fifth Using the quotient property, this is going to be the log base 3 of x divided by y to the fifth power. Now sometimes we use logarithm properties to do the opposite of a simplification. Sometimes we intentionally expand logarithms because they're easier to solve when they're expanded. So let's see how we can expand these logarithms. Our first example is the log base 10 of 5x to the fourth. Now this is the same as the log of 5 times x to the fourth. And since the 5 and the x to the fourth are multiplied together, that means I can use the product property. This is the same as the log of 5 plus the log of x to the fourth. Now I'm almost done except my second term here has an exponent on it. This four, I can use the power property and pull it out front of my log sign. So this is going to expand out to be the log base 10 of five plus four times the log of x. Let's try this again. Here we have the log base 5 of x squared divided by y cubed. Now here I have two variables being divided. I have an x squared divided by y cubed. And since they're being divided I can use the quotient property. I can write this as the log and remember to keep your base so this is base 5 of x squared minus the log of y cubed. Now that I've separated the division, I can use the power property and pull my exponents outside the logs. I have an exponent on the x and on the y. And this is going to become two times the log of x minus three times the log of y. So that is our final expanded form of log base five of x squared divided by y cubed. And that completes the tutorial on logarithm properties.